Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Experience Kills. With me today is Richard in the co-hosting seat. I'm back. Woo! He's gonna you're gonna you're gonna take a dip with me, yeah? We're gonna have a little dive into the cool ocean in this hot summer's day and explore a well, I don't wanna call it this, but it, it is. It's an edutainment title from E Line Media. Uh, Beyond Blue. These are the guys that made Never Alone, Richard. Do you remember Never Alone, the Inuit kind of 2D platformy game? I do remember it. A game that was, um, I suppose, more didactic than um, entertaining. Didactic. Didactic. Can you explain that to the audience, what the hell that means? Because even I'm a bit unsure right now. <laughs> it means it teaches, you, it teaches you stuff. That's what that means. So it's another way of saying edutainment without sounding like a prick. Yeah. Okay, cool. Learn it. Learn it. Didactic. What a great word. Uh, in that case, I think... We might be looking at something similar here with Beyond Blue. Basically, uh, the framing device here is that you are an ocean explorer, uh, you know, kind of a marine biologist type, and your character's name is Mirai. And you basically dive into these various different oceans around the world to interact and mostly scan things and pick up stuff. But you're looking at basically the wildlife. Uh, you're swimming around and looking at the corals. Uh, there's kind of a an environmental sort of activist element to it as well that comes in as the game progresses. Uh, but predominantly, you're, you're just sort of learning about the oceans. It was heavily inspired uh, by Blue Planet 2, uh, looking at the, the resources that have been provided to me on their website and stuff, basically. So these guys at E-Line, I think, uh, watch, watch David Attenborough's seminal series. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. And, you know, awesomely, we're inspired to further that attempt at educating the people about our oceans because our oceans are one of those things that are to many people kind of impenetrable aren't they you you can't just walk over and have a look at a whale you know you you have to you know go through the lens of a documentary or in this case a really well put together little video game uh, that gets you to get down there have a swim around it's set in a kind of near future so that way they can get around not having big lumbering scuba tanks and you haven't got to worry about you know being able to breathe you can basically just swim around like a fish and uh, and explore and once you've done the story you can go back to all the environments that have been introduced via it as well uh, and you have like a home sub that you go back to where you can like progress the storyline it's actually got some really good voice acting throughout as well one of the things that drew me to it was that one of the voice actors is uh, Mira Furlan who for me is a big deal because she played the incredible Delenn in Babylon 5 uh, which I'm a massive unashamed fan of but I know I will be mocked for that to fair, fair play it's pretty janky by today's standards but that, <laughs> that did make me kind of stand up and go wow maybe that they've got her because she cares about this sort of thing the environment and stuff um, and you know because the voice acting is really good it's actually got a surprisingly good soundtrack when you're on your home sub you have a bunch of like almost like a little Spotify app you can like pick different music from and it's all from around the world and really diverse and that's really cool like this is this is a really interesting little experience um one of the other things i just want to quickly mention that even helps contextualize your exploration of the deeps even further is that as you go you unlock proper documentary stuff that's been shot special just for this video game you know with interviews with real experts marine biologists and oceanography people and stuff like that uh, and also stuff on like the animals and the technology behind exploring the oceans it, they, they're really going the extra mile to help get the word out about the plight of you know the oceans and the problems that they're facing with like mining and you know all kinds of other environmental aspects you know with like pollution and stuff like that but also just really enjoy the beauty of it hang out with some whales swim with dolphins things that most people aren't going to be able to do in their actual lifetime it's really cool Richard it looks wicked I mean when you said it was edutainment that has bad connotations for me you're probably too young to remember the Philips CDI but that was where I first heard the, the term edutainment. And it was this like failed console, right? Have you heard of it? Yeah. I've you heard of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not that, I'm not really that much younger than you, but yeah. Okay. But um, I was reasonably young when that came out. And um, it wasn't a big deal. So, yeah, that was the first wave of edut edutainment that I remember. And it was just stuff like um, how to spell and, you know real proper like education focused rather than anything to do with the game it was more like you know when you you'd ask for a computer and it was an excuse to get new games yeah. you'd always tell, tell your dad oh, I can do my homework on it well, the CDI was basically just teaching you how to do your homework um, so that's the vibe I get when I hear <laughs> about edutainment this is not this is not that 
No, this is not that. And I use that term, you know, in a slightly flippant way. It's definitely more of a game than it is educational. But what it is, what it does is it kind of helps you know put you in the situation where you find yourself thinking about the environment you find yourself considering our oceans in a different way and, and really sort of marveling at the beauty of it i mean they've done a great job with the engine here obviously the e-line aren't a humongous team they're not like got millions and millions and millions of dollars of resources to throw at this and i think considering the limitations the game looks really really nice it's really well lit throughout it's atmospheric and it really brings across the sense of mystery of, of exploration of you know wanting to push yourself out there and actually find out what's going on there is a story there is a narrative thrust for the exploration it isn't just a case of swimming about you are always talking to these other characters over comms and then when you get back to your base you've got messages and more you know, like dialogue and stuff that's happening and it, as things unfold there is a threat that you need to deal with and i don't want to spoil it I was going to ask you about that. So, yeah, I, I thought from the looks of it, this can't... How, how much of a story can there be? Surely they're not going to introduce any sort of, um, you know, drama into this. Yeah, they do. There, there is then. Yeah, mm. yeah, there absolutely is. So it isn't, it isn't just a case of... I mean, like I said, the main mechanic is you go around scanning the fish, scanning the, the animals you find underwater and, like, collecting samples and things like that. But then there are, uh, there are ways in which those mechanics are then integrated into the story and that there is this threat coming from man you know to this environment that as a scientist and you know in a group of scientists and people that clearly love the oceans you want to defend it you want to do what you can to mitigate those risks to this ecosystem because it really matters um and it, yeah it brings all that across really well um there's also sort of storyline a backstory going on with the character that you're playing as um and it does it's surprisingly good at all of that i was quite impressed it could very much have just been like you know uh, basically an interactive documentary but there's a lot more to it than that there's a lot more actual gameplay in there um, which which really fun to do um, and that you know you know what matters the most does the swimming feel good are those mechanics solid yes they are yes it does it's not oh, a problem wow. it feels good to swim around it feels good to like you there's like a sprint swim so you can move a bit quicker um, as well you've got good uh, 3d access control as well so you can swim up and down and therefore explore explore cave systems and things of that nature uh, one thing I noticed was when you're talking about technical limitations but I'm honestly going to kind of forgive most of it there is some clipping issues there are issues when you can like launch um, a scanning drone at larger animals like whales and then it can kind of rotate around them i found myself being able to like move the camera um inside the animal on a couple of occasions which was just a hollow void so it wasn't like oh here's the inside view of a whale it was just this is broken but you know that's not the end of the world it, it, it still perfectly works uh, in most uh, cases so that's not really a problem um but yeah i i find myself kind of charmed by this game um it's production values i think kind of far outweigh the limited resources that would have been available to make it and there's a lot of love here and a lot of care and a lot of attention to detail which i can only respect when you're dealing with such an important subject matter and the cost of the final product as well i was shocked to see it's only like 16 quid for something that when i saw it um looks wonderful and that's what you want isn't it from something like this that sense of wonder and it does have that from first impressions absolutely and there there was a there was a moment i remember very clearly when you talk about the wonder of the mystery and also the kind of the fear was i'm swimming along i'm over like a reef and then it drops off you know the ocean the ocean floor drops off and it's just darkness in front of you and as someone that's done um, some snorkeling and some scuba I, I remember that feeling you know that feeling of all of a sudden oh this is just a huge void there's no telling what's in there it, and there is a real sense of sort of fear to that and also mystery and wonder like what could be down there and they and it works they, they convey it in this video game which i was impressed by i take it it's not too long do you know for for the price and for how much is packed into there surprisingly a, a lot by the sounds of it how long is the game though I think you certainly get your, your values worth. I mean, because you've got the ability to go back to all those environments that you are kind of introduced to through the story once you've completed the story so you can go back and fully explore, find all the animals and stuff, find, do all the scanning that's like required to like really tick all the boxes as it were. There's plenty of, yeah, there's plenty of like collection elements, which I know you like, Richard. So yeah. you, can, you can definitely go and find every single dolphin, every single clownfish, every single particular type of coral, that sort of thing. Well, I'm, I'm currently doing that in Animal Crossing now because they've just released the swimming patch. Oh. So I'm, 
I'm, I'm doing that, but I it suspect, looks a bit better. I suspect this is more fleshed out than the Animal Crossing yeah, yeah. swimming side of things. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, but I, I think uh, it's really cool. And as a form of edutainment, I, you're going to learn things playing this because it's all real, except for the slight futuristic setting. Just to All that's there for is to enable your kind of unfettered exploration of the environments. Um, and yeah, beyond that, you know i think you're going to really learn stuff and have a nice time and it's quite yeah there is some peril like i mentioned but it's actually quite a, a relaxing experience and it's a nice sign of kind of game to play in conjunction with something much more action oriented or stressful you know as a little a palate cleanser to, to dip in and out of which is how i've been playing i've really enjoyed my time with it it's very very good sounds great and what are you playing it on i'm playing on the xbox one uh, but it's available for all sorts of things, right? So PC, PS4, it is coming to Switch. So it will literally be on every console that you could possibly want to play it on. Yeah, so that was uh, Beyond Blue by E-Line. Um, yeah, so I hope you le- hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of Experience Kills. You can find me at DIYE on Twitter. You can find Richard at Colonel Red on Twitter. You can find us as a collective at Experience Kills. Uh, we have a website now as well, which you can check out if you want to just keep an eye on all of the things all at once, basically, which is experiencekills.co.uk. Predominantly, though, what we would really appreciate is a like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. It's not monetized in any way, and we don't ask for any financial um, assistance from you. We just literally ask for a like and subscribe but if you don't have time to watch those videos you can also find this as an audio podcast uh, wherever good audio podcasts can be found so Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that so by all means give us a rating on there as well as long as it's five stars Um, so until next time I'm going to go get back in the ocean and have a little uh, swim around and see what other lovely fish I can find Richard you going to join me? I would like to give it a try so until next time bye 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 Keep all that in because I'm going to cut that together. I think I can make an amazing track. Okay.